Hello my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys, welcome back to our slash pro revenge, where people get the sweetest revenges on sleazy idiots who've wronged them. And in this episode, guys, OP's girlfriend leaves him for not having enough money. And to add insult to injury, she robs his house and tries to destroy his life. And OP teaches her a lesson she'll never forget. It's ridiculous. I hope you enjoy the stories today. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And as always, you can send or link your Reddit post to this email right here. So I'm a dryliner, a guy who creates walls and rooms and buildings by trade, which means I do a lot of moving around for my trade, as most of the work I do is towards the end of the project. This means that I spend a lot of my time renting flats and houses for only short periods, usually about 6 months at a time. This has meant that I've had to deal with a lot of landlords over the years, both good and bad. When it comes to the bad landlords, I'll just normally walk away and get on with moving to the next job and just take the loss of my deposits and never use them again. But this particular landlord got my back up so badly that I wasn't just gonna walk away. I got a big job in London working on the new Wembley Stadium, so I decided that I would look for a house to rent rather than a flat, as I knew I was going to be working on it for a while and found a reasonably priced house to rent from a private landlord in a local newspaper. So I give the guy a call and meet with him later that day. The guy seemed okay. And we went to view the house, I paid him the deposit in cash and moved in that weekend. I ended up staying in the house for nearly a year with no problems. I always had the rent paid into his bank account on time, fixed any small problems that might have popped up with the house without bothering him, and to the time it came to moving out, I only ever spoke to him twice on the phone. Once, when there was an issue with the heating that I was unable to fix myself, and second was to tell him that I'm planning on moving out. So the time that the job was finishing, I went around to the pawn shop that he owned to give him notice and to let him know that I was happy for him to come around to inspect the house so that I could get my deposit back from him when I returned the keys. The guy never came around to inspect the house, so I assumed that he had just come around and let himself in while I was at work, as I told him that I had no issue with him doing that if need be. So on the day I moved out, I went around to his shop and handed him back his keys and then asked for my deposit, to which he responded, what deposit? I tell him the month's rent that I gave you in advance of moving in as a security deposit. He then told me that he was keeping that to cover the cost of repairing damages caused while I was living in the property. I then responded, what damages? I asked that because with the bits of work and decorating I'd done on the house, it was in a way better state now than when I moved into it. His response was to step forward, get right into my face and say, you're not getting it back, so you can just F off. He then gave me a shove, which I needed to take three steps back to avoid falling on my ass. Now I'm what you would class as an average size build, and this landlord had a good 4 inches on me height wise, and obviously spent a lot of time in the gym. So the wise move would to be back away and cut my losses. Now before I was a builder, I was a member of the British Army in a regiment called the Royal Green Jackets and they had trained us that the best way to proceed when confronted with aggression is to meet it swiftly and with much more violent aggression. So without even thinking about it, I started to move forward with the full intention of dropping this idiot quickly and painfully. After the first step though, a thought popped in my head, like a bolt from the blue. So I stopped and took a moment to examine the idea from a few different angles, to the point where I just said, okay, bye, to my now ex-landlord and walked out of his shop. Now what the landlord did not know was that I had a spare back door key cut when I lived in the house, which I had stashed in my van just in case I ever lost the keys so I could still get back inside. So later that evening, I let myself back in and decided to stop for one last night before leaving in the morning for my next job which was in Scotland. So this is where my revenge came in. I spent the last night in the house, carefully removing every bit of wood in there, taking down doors, removing skirting boards, banisters, floorboards, and being extremely careful not to damage anything. I also completely dismantled all the kitchen units, took up the wood flooring and carpets, and then left everything in nice neat piles in each room. I then got in my van the next morning and was preparing to start my drive, when I decided that I wanted to rub a little more salt into my ex-landlord's wounds. So I stopped at his shop on the way out of London, got a spare hammer, screwdriver, bag of nails, and a box of wood screws out of the back of my van, and went into his shop. My ex-landlord was not there, probably for the best. 
So I left the tools with his confused looking assistant and told her to tell her boss you'll be needing these, and left for my drive up north. I had my phone switched off while driving, and a few hours later when I was having a bite to eat in a service station, I decided to switch it back on, and I was greeted by a very long string of text messages and some very colorful voice messages, which left me chuckling to myself. Now I did respond to one of the texts he sent me. The text was, Do you think you're effing funny leaving me nails and screws? I responded, Yes, and I never heard from him again. Guys, why do I feel like this sleazy landlord does this to every single tenant he has? Like, the guy clearly takes cash security deposits because it doesn't leave a paper trail. And guys, what I've learned from reading these posts is that you should never ever ever mess with a tradesman because they have a very particular set of skills that they've acquired over a very long career that'll make them a nightmare for landlords like that man. So yeah, with that said though guys, always leave a paper trail when you can. And the next post, OP learns the hard way. After encountering a sleazy idiot who takes him to court. Okay, so just a little bit of information before I get into the story. I'm a 22 year old male, and I work construction as a foreman, and I run a few crews. For my job, I need a truck that can pull a lot of trailers, and I also get into a lot of sketchy job sites, especially in the winter. So I drive a new lifted pickup truck, an F-350. Anyways, so about 4 months ago, I got off work one day, and really didn't feel like making dinner. So I decided to get myself the trusty Big Mac at McDonald's. Well, after I get my order, I was gonna pull out into the parking lot to drive home, and I was looking over to my left to see how busy the road was. Well, I wasn't paying great attention to what was happening in front of me, and as I was creeping forward, someone who was in front of me was stopped and also not paying attention, and I ended up barely hitting his mirror and scraping his door with my front end. So with that, I immediately reversed and hopped out, and I made sure the guy was okay, and then apologized. Knowing that it was fully my fault, and then asked him if he wanted to call the cops and swap insurance. So let's call the guy Brent. Brent says to me, nah bro, we're all good. If you just give me your insurance information, I think we can get this taken care of. Hearing him say that, I was fine, because there wasn't damage done to my truck, and it's not required to call the cops for an accident if it occurs in a private parking lot with minimum damage. This is relevant later. So we exchanged information, and he seems pretty cool, so I tell him to go get the damage bid, to contact me, and I'll just pay in cash. So my insurance rates don't go up, as long as he's okay with it. He tells me that's fine, and we both just leave, and I feel like a moron, but all in all, Brent seems like a nice, cool dude, and I hope we can get it all sorted out smoothly. About a month passes by, and I haven't heard anything from Brent or the shop I told him to go to, and honestly, I wasn't too stressed about this because if he decided to not get it done, that's on him. Well, he calls me up one day, and he sends me the bid for damages, and it comes out to $2,403. Now this was much more than I imagined, but I said to get it done, and I would take care of the bill afterward, and that was that. He then hung up after saying it was cool, and I went on with my day as usual. Another month goes by and I don't hear anything until Brent calls me up while I'm at work and says, Hey brother, so I talked to the shop and they said they can't get me in for another two weeks. And they may end up charging me more if they find any more damage. I say to him, okay, sounds good, just let me know man, I hope it goes smooth for you and I'm sorry for the inconvenience. He seems to take it good and I'm really trying to just be a good person. And that's when he responds with, well... After talking to my wife, I'm okay if you just want to write a check for me for $2,500, and we can call it even. Now, this does seem odd to me, because why the heck wouldn't someone want their vehicle repairs all paid for? I tell him, okay man, let's just set up a time and place to meet, and I'll get you paid. The guy liked the idea, and ended the call by telling me that he would let me know. And another month passes by. I hear nothing again. And at this point, I'm just getting fed up. I just want the situation to stop being over my head. He calls me up at around midnight one night, and he asks if we can meet in town. I found this kind of disrespectful because I was nearly asleep and had to be at work at 5am the next day, but either way, I said it was fine. The next day, I took my $2,500 cash, wrote up a quick contract saying that this payment would be accepted as payment in full for damages, and by accepting it, it would release me from any and all liability. Now this was a pretty fair contract because it was the deal we'd already made over the phone, just in writing. So I get to the place we suggested as a meetup spot, gave him the cash, and he signs the contract without even reading it. 
and the guy didn't even want a copy. This was a red flag to me, but I just assumed the guy really didn't care about it that much, so I just sent him the photo of the contract. And as you can guess by now, another month goes by with me just living life carefree with not a worry in the world about the stupid car accident. Well, I go to check my mail one day and I have a notice from the guy's lawyer that he's suing me for not paying after wrecking his car. This pissed me off, but I also knew that I had plenty of text messages and a contract on my side. I immediately call Brent and he blocks my number. Luckily enough, my girlfriend works for a lawyer, so I get him updated and he said he would love to help. He lets me know that I saved my ass by writing that contract, as any contract worth over $500 is to be held up in any level court in my state. And this is when I get to work on my revenge. I remember on the side of the guy's car, he had a business logo, and I took pictures of the damage, so I hop online and did some googling, and it turns out that he owns this company. I can also see that he has about 12 one-star reviews, all in dispute, because of his shady business practices telling people that it'll cost one thing, and then charging them four times what he said it would. Sound familiar? So, remember when he said that the shop may charge more than the original $2,403? That's right, he was suing me for $10,000. Four times what the shop told him it would cost. The guy was trying some sneaky crap on me. My lawyer takes note of this, and we show up to court ready for war. Now the guy's sleazy. As soon as we get there, he sees me and says, are you ready to give me more of daddy's money? With a smirk. His lawyer then gets up and starts trying to say BS, from me hitting and running, and Brent barely got a picture of my license plate, to I tried to bully him into taking a deal for $2,500, when the damage was clearly $10,000. There were obvious holes in his story, and he really didn't have much to say. Just imagine the smile on my face as my lawyer lays out the printouts of our text messages and the physical copy of the contract, which was signed by Brent. His lawyer went ghostly white, and he looked sick. And that was the final nail in the coffin, as the judge said he'd seen enough. He then asked Brent for any final statements, and Brent said, I don't even have the 2500 anymore. Can I just get that then, and we'll be okay? The guy literally admitted to the judge that he received my money and that his story was just a load of horse crap. I thought his lawyer was going to strangle him, it was beautiful. The judge ended up ruling in my favor and demanded him pay all my legal fees as well as damages and lost wages because I had to miss work to be in court. Now the absolute sweetest part is that this particular day, my crew was on a very high wage job and I was technically the one getting paid before I paid them out as subcontractors. This means that I was to be paid $475 an hour and this whole ordeal took about 5 hours, so he ended up having to pay me almost $5,000. I don't think I've ever been so happy in my life. Yeah, I love how this backfired so hard on Brent, guys. Like, this is exactly what you get for trying to be a sleazeball. Not to mention the guy's a total idiot for forgetting that OP took a picture of the contract he signed. Like, guys, I don't know what it's like being a lawyer, but I can only imagine the amount of head shaking I'd be doing if I was defending someone, and then all of a sudden the opposing party is like, well, you know what? We have proof that your client paid. Like, he signed this paper document saying that he received the money already. Like, I think I would just walk out of court at that point. Alright, so seven years ago, I dated a girl for about four years. Let's call her Brandy. She was very awesome, and I loved her very dearly. As far as I knew, we were awesome together and great friends as well as lovers. We rarely ever fought, got along great, and we got engaged and had plans to get married. As far as I knew, everything was perfect. I spoiled her too, and maybe that was my biggest fault. I always let her go shopping whenever she wanted, wherever she wanted, and I kept her fed from a golden spoon and wrapped her in the finest linens. Even if she didn't ask, I typically enjoyed spoiling her. That's just how I am. She then got a part-time job paying $10 an hour, and I subsequently got her a new cell phone line for her as a work line, as a celebratory gesture because she had been wanting a new phone and wasn't due for an upgrade. She said she would pay the balance on the old phone with her first paycheck, and then one autumn day, our car got repoed, and she called the bank. The bank said I was three months behind on my payments, and I knew that wasn't right. And that's when she told me it wasn't working out. She said she was tired of being broke and struggling financially. She said she wanted something better out of life than being broke all the time. 
But the interesting thing to note here is that she hasn't worked in a couple of years, and she had just been living off my paycheck. I'm a network engineer, I live comfortably in a fairly nice house, with a lot of the latest toys and gadgets, and everything but my newest car is paid for. I would hardly call that struggling, but apparently that wasn't good enough for her. So she left after my car got repoed. I was upset about it too, and I went to my mother's house one day while she packed her stuff. While I was at my mom's, I paid the repo fees and the past due balance for the amount that the bank told me was owed. It turns out, the balance was for a different account, and the bank had repoed the wrong vehicle, and had given me the wrong account number to pay, so I paid someone else's account. They fixed it, applied the balance to my account, and promptly gave me my car back. I came back that evening with some friends, and she had taken everything from my house. She took all of the furniture except for a couch and my bed and my kids' beds. She took all my collectibles, all the decorations, food, basically everything that wasn't nailed down she took. Also, when she left, she took her two cell phones I'd been paying for on a payment plan, so I still had to deal with my cell phone bill being $300 a month for three phones, when I only use one of them. I also still owe $1,200 for those two phones. And then, there was a matter of a $2,000 loan she had taken out with my mom, that she agreed in writing to pay back. I sent her an email a few days later, asking for all my stuff back and for the money she owed, and she responded that I was harassing her, and if I ever contacted her again, she would call the cops, and then she threatened bodily harm from her stepdad. So with that, I suspend her lines and didn't say anything. She then called me from a borrowed phone the next day to ask me if I was going to tell her before I turned the phone off. I told her I felt like I didn't need to, since they were my phones and the account was in my name. Since then, she's tried to have my electricity turned off, which didn't happen because they called me to confirm. She's also tried to sell my car without having it in her possession, which failed. She's also tried to call police on me for harassment, dumped trash in my yard and called the HOA, and she's broken into my house multiple times and left things and taken other things. I have since changed the locks and set up security cameras. I had enough of that stuff, so here's where my revenge comes in. I took her to small claims court for $9,500 for property stolen and damages and all the money she owed me, and I won. I also got a promotion at my job since she left, was recently given a raise and a big fat bonus, and I just got a $1,000 voucher from Delta since they screwed up my flights, and things are better than they had been before she left. Tenfold. She now lives with her mom in a tiny room with no air conditioner, no heater, she can't get a car or a cell phone because of her credit, and she relies on her friends and family to drive her to her two-day-a-week job and school. She also owes $40,000 for school loans for her first couple of years, and she's got four more years to go, but I guess that's better than struggling, right? Edit. So I just wanted to add that after I suspended her phone lines, she got really angry, and she attempted to get revenge in a number of ways, all of which failed. Number one, she tried to sell my car to a dealership without having the car with her. Like, how stupid can you be? Number two, she tried to have my electricity turned off. Number three, she hacked my Facebook and broke into my house several times. She left things, took other things, until I changed the locks and put in security cameras. Number four, she tried to close my loan account with the bank and have them repo the car. Number five, she tried hacking all my email accounts, bank accounts, Steam accounts, Xbox accounts, and any other account she could to try to screw me over. Number five, she did manage to cancel one of my debit cards, but it wasn't my main one, and she didn't take any money. She just wanted me to face the difficulty of not having a debit card. Number six, she has threatened me multiple times with physical bodily harm from her stepdad and her brother. Number seven, she's dumped trash on my lawn, and she's called the HOA multiple times on me to try to get me in trouble. Number eight, she frequently sent me pictures of the cat that we adopted, and this one hurts a bit, but I will never let her know that. And lastly, she's made sure that everybody knows what a horrible person I am and how crappy I was throughout the entire relationship. Through all that, the only time I ever contacted her was to ask for my stuff back. Once. That's it. I gave her a list of stuff she took, told her she had a week to give it back, or else. And if she ever attempted to contact me, I ignored it completely. I never once called the police on her, I never let any of it bother me, and I never said, hey, why did you do this? But she kept on continuously trying to screw me over, failing every single time, and I never flinched or batted an eye. And to me, that is the ultimate victory. 
So yeah, the ex going completely psycho and trying to ruin OP after she left him and he cancelled her cell phone. That's a new one to me guys, like what's he supposed to do? Keep paying for the phone that she's using? While she's out there looking for someone who has more money than him? I don't think so. I'm glad OP took her to cards and won though, and I'm glad to know that she's struggling right now. Like as bad as it is to say that. And guys, I never wish a crappy life on anyone, but boy, sometimes when I read posts like this, I'm like, okay, I think I can say that this person doesn't deserve good things. Because some people are crappy human beings and just use others, like the girl in this last post, guys. Okay, so I met this girl who was 22 years old at the time, while I was a 30 year old at the time. I was working in a national park, and she was a housekeeper on a work visa. We instantly hit it off, and within a month, we were in a relationship. We even had a solid long distance arrangement, where we would visit each other. I would spend a few months in Romania, or meet her at some vacation destination, and she would spend a few months in the States. This went on for about two years, and eventually, the conversation came up with her family about the possibility of her moving to the States permanently, as political and economic corruption makes life pretty unpleasant for a lot of people. Her marrying and moving to the US meant that her mom wouldn't have to worry about her daughter having a good life. So I arranged for sponsorship and proposed to her, and it seemed like my dreams were coming true. And then, about a month after she settled in, I get a message from her best friend back home. What followed were a year's worth of screenshots where she bragged about conning me into paying for her residency while she cheated on me with eight different men. In her friend's words, she said, you're a good man and you don't deserve this. So over the following two weeks, I reported her to ICE and Homeland Security for a conversation her brother and I had over a bottle at one point. He bragged about how he'd done time in prison for smuggling weapons to a Turkish terrorist, and how she had been his lookout on several occasions. And as you might imagine, in the war on terror days, this was not taken lightly. She was immediately arrested and deported, and she was put on a permanent no-entry terror watch list. If you want to take advantage of me and cheat, have fun never being able to come to the States. So yeah, I'm not gonna say I didn't see that coming, guys. Like, not the deportation part, but the part where the girl used him to get to the US. Like, I've seen some clips of, like, 90 Day Fiancé, okay? Where the guy clearly is way more interested in the girl than she is of him. And I feel like this might have been one of those scenarios. Like, did she deserve Ice getting called on her and getting deported for cheating on him with eight guys? Maybe, but... Did Obi also deserve it for being a little bit naive? Also, maybe. Guys, let me know your thoughts. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash pro revenge. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's super satisfying stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people, where OP psycho Karen mother-in-law cuts off her hair in front of her family because she doesn't like the way it looks. Ain't that a B? If you haven't heard it, go check it out, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.